So I did not know before I built this little kit that I actually had a, a counterfeit one that I got off eBay. The real one is made by JYE Tech Limited. And the first giveaway is the boot up screen. This is actually a statement from the JYE Tech website, by the way. The first thing that you'll notice is the, on the counterfeit ones, uh, any reference to JYE Tech is just plain absent and the second thing is the um the, the pcbs on a real one this id sticker this number here will match up to a number on the boot up screen and the pcb will also say jye tech on there so my unit here has none of those things it boots up like this there should also be a JYE Tech logo right here, which is also absent. So, so I think what's happened is that probably someone from JYE Tech leaked a file or they were hacked or something and these counterfeiters made an exact copy. I mean, this thing is exact. I mean, the circuit board is exactly the same. I believe the components are the same. The shell's exactly the same. It's like they stole their files and just used them to make counterfeits. So, I mean, this thing is a nice solid little product. It works. Um, so, this is this is something that's kind of annoying. It's the, the problem of the Chinese counterfeiting everything. It's very, very pervasive. I mean, I'm afraid to even get a little integrated circuit chip these days because, or a transistor because it might be a counterfeit. <laughs> So, like I said, I did not know this was a counterfeit before I made the video initially. I decided I was going to keep it. I'm not going to try to return it. I'm going to use it and, uh, and use this as a, uh, a video to show people the difference between the real thing and the phonies. So, it seems to me that pretty much all of the eBay stores practically are selling the counterfeits and you know I just decided to keep it I'm, I'm never gonna be able to do a firmware update on it because if I do there's gonna be a little message that comes up that says this is a fake board and I don't know if that just disables it or what but so just a little disclaimer so here comes the video this video is going to be about my experience with building the DSO Shell Model 150 handheld digital oscilloscope. I'm just going to do a quick overview of the thing and my experience with it and my opinion about it. And so I hope you uh, enjoy the video. Uh, about a week ago, I ordered a handheld digital oscilloscope kit off of eBay for $25. And just to see, like, how good would it be? And I'm curious, like, what kind of quality this would be for $25. It's really a small little thing. It's a smaller than I expected it to be. So the first one I ordered, I tried to get from Hong Kong. And that was my second experience trying to get something through eBay from Hong Kong. The first package never, ever arrived. I got a refund which happened to be this same product. And the second package that I ordered never got here either. So with the refund of that, I bought this kit that I tried to get the first time from a seller that's in California. And I subsequently got it in about a week's time. So let's unpackage this and see what's in here. All right, so we got the styrofoam off of here and here we go, it's all packed up in a nice anti-static plastic bag. And wow, that's a compact little thing. It could literally fit in my shirt pocket. Cool. Let's get everything out of here now. So here's everything out of the package. Here's a little, little face plate and the board that goes around it. The bottom half, some miscellaneous little parts that I gotta solder. Switches and 
things like that. Here's the main board and um, another sub PCB and it looks like some instructions. So hopefully this won't be too hard to put together. Hopefully the uh, instructions aren't all in Chinese, which I can't read. <laughs> yeah, this this is this is really small. I didn't didn't realize it was going to be such a small little thing. All right, cool. Well, I guess we'll start putting it together now. So the instructions here are actually in English, and they appear to be pretty decent instructions. So that's nice. I know some of these other cheap, ultra cheap Chinese electronic kit things are, well, you get the instructions and they're in Chinese and you gotta kind of guess like some of the stuff. So it's nice to not have to do that. So I'm gonna get my soldering iron warmed up and start building this puppy. All right, so step one is you're supposed to connect power to see if the display is functional. And so we will do that now. Ha, huh, look at that. It's, an, it's booting up. And bam. <laughs> That's too cool. All right, so we have a functional display. We can proceed to step number two. So at this point, we have all of the stuff soldered to the boards. We need to just Put everything in the case. One thing that's a little nerve-wracking is this LCD display kind of hanging off this delicate ribbon connector. Um, be really easy to damage that so just got to be careful. Overall the fit of everything is very nice. The plastic case makes it feel something like a kind of like a toy but uh, it's some pretty nice sturdy plastic. So, overall for $25, what can you expect? So I went through here per the instructions, measured the voltages, everything's checking out. So now I'm gonna start putting some of these in the case so I can do this calibration procedure here. So I guess it's about an hour and a half later or so of me just taking my time and fiddling around with this thing and we've got it running. I'm feeding it uh, temporarily with my do-it-yourself power supply and I'm feeding a uh, approximately one kilohertz rough sine wave from this do-it-yourself audio oscillator that I actually got off of the um, geofex.com website. It was called the Quick and Dirty, Audi uh, Quick and Dirty Audio Oscillator. It doesn't put out a perfect sine wave, but it's a good test tone. This thing's very easy to use. It's, uh, once you put it together, it's very sturdy. It, uh, it starts to feel a little less toy-like, <laughs> but it's very light. It's only like 100 grams um, all together. It came with this kind of uh, cheesy alligator clip BNC cable, but I have an actual spoke, uh, <laughs> actual scope probes that I can use with it so um, the instructions overall were pretty good it seems as though they are a little outdated for the uh, the kit that I have like for instance these resistors and capacitors and stuff that you're supposed to solder in that doesn't apply because they're all SMD components so um, for SMT and let's see what other things were a little bit quirky like this here it doesn't this doesn't apply we're not soldering uh, SMT components to the board they're already soldered on and um, the, the one thing that also was a little confusing is like they, they've zoomed in on such a small picture or part of the, the PCB that it's a little hard to tell, like, is this on which side of the PCB is it supposed to be on? I actually did this one wrong the first time and I was 
fortunate that I only soldered two pins, so I was able to get that out and put it on the right side of the circuit board. Um, and then, let's see, the only other thing, the only other thing that was a little quirky was there is actually a right and a wrong way to put this top piece on. Um, it's subtle, but it, there's kind of a slope from the back to the front, and if you put it on backwards, um, you, you can tell if something's not right, which of course is what I did. But um, that's a minor thing. And I did go ahead and measure all these voltages. They're all like right on, very, very close to what it says here. The calibration procedure is really simple. Uh, there's just like two little trim pots and you know, it couldn't really be any easier. So overall, um, I think it's not a bad value, 25 bucks for a nifty little handheld oscilloscope, just, you know, very basic, but um, it works. And, you know, if you want to just look at waveforms from a, like a distortion pedal or something, you know, this is real handy. You don't have to fire up the, the old Tektronics, which isn't a bad scope. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of more fun to just use this. And you can take this anywhere, you know, pretty easily. All you need is a wall wart, which I have to come up with a wall wart power supply for it. But yeah, so overall, pretty happy with it. Uh, I think, you know, I'd probably recommend this to someone that if they wanted a little handheld digital oscilloscope, you know, I think this one is not bad. 